I want to kick off the Christmas season with a couple of stories this morning and try to help us a little bit to make our lives better. We, we all understand that Christmas is about the birth of a child, but it's not the birth of any child. It's about the birth of Jesus, right? And so I want to read to you a scripture found in Luke, and it's part of the Christmas story, and it goes this way. It says, and suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Would you look at your neighbor and say those three words to them right now? Don't be afraid. I don't know what time it was in the middle of the night last night. Janet, you may have seen the clock, but we have a little dog that barely weighs four pounds, and at some point in the middle of the night, she got scared and woke us up, just started barking. Man, I didn't know whether to grab the gun or grab Janet or grab my heart. She got afraid. Of course, I looked around. The alarm was still set. Everything was just like it's supposed to. I'm like, well, <laughs> she must have had a bad dream or something. I don't know. <laughs> Say it again with me. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, the angel said. And here's the, the verse that I want to talk about, and Pastor Nate's going to continue talking about next week. And the angel said, I've got some good news for you that's going to bring Great joy to everybody. Great joy to everybody. The Savior, yes, the Lord, Jesus himself, has been born today. Great joy. Happy. I just want people to be happy. I walked in and Kendra has her sweatshirt on and it says, choose happy. I'm like, I need that shirt for my sermon today. Happy. Why? Because Christmas is the season for celebration. It's a time to be happy. It's a time to experience joy. But the fact is, not everybody is happy. And I suppose for good reason, right? I mean, this has been a most peculiar year for all of us. With shutdowns, stay-at-home orders, separation, distancing, masks. I'm sick of masks. And that doesn't mean you're wrong to wear them here today. I want you to do that. We want you to feel safe. We want to follow. It'd be hard for me to preach to you like this this morning. And we're definitely six feet apart. Well, I am anyway. And I'm the one spitting and sputtering up here, okay? But, and COVID-19, right, of all things. Listen, Janet and I had COVID a couple of weeks ago before Thanksgiving. And we got through it okay. I was a little achy. I didn't even know I had it really. I didn't, I don't know, maybe my tolerance, I don't know. But uh, she got congested and doctor gave her some antibiotics and a breathing treatment and and, uh, you know, in a few days, I mean, here we are. We're okay. We never had any fever and all that. I mean, so don't be afraid is what I'm saying. And thank you for clapping for that because I'm glad we're still here. And, and, but, but you can live with a paranoia. Don't be afraid because there's, a, there's good news bringing great joy to everybody. God is good, and so here we are. And it's been a crazy year for sure, but we can still be happy, and we can make Christmas memorable and special. Not, not a Christmas, not a season to be despised, but a Christmas to remember. We had to cancel all of our Thanksgiving plans. Her and I sat at home and I got her recipe out for some dressing and I just made a little bit of homemade dressing and, uh, and she was a little bit achy still and feeling some of that and we just, you know, we just had Thanksgiving, just her and I and the scared dog. <laughs> Choose to be happy, right? So, I'm reminded when I was thinking about 
this theme, and Pastor Nate and I were talking about the holidays. I'm like, man, we just need to, we need to lift the room, right? We need to lift the hearts of people. We need to lift your living room and wherever you are today. Just, just look up, right? And so I was, I was reminded, that, let me explain this and you'll, you'll get it. I was reminded of the story of Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge is the principal character in the novel that Charles Dickens wrote entitled A Christmas. And at the beginning, Scrooge is is cold-hearted, and he's tight-fisted, and he's greedy. He's a man who despises Christmas and all things which give people happiness. How many of you have ever seen one of the movies, even the animated, any form? I mean, Donald Duck even does a version of Scrooge, right? I mean, we all know that. I mean, his last name, Scrooge, has come into the English language kind of as a by word for describing a miser. You Scrooge, you know, which, which are the traits of displayed by the Scrooge character in this story. The tale of Scrooge's redemption by the three ghosts of Christmas has kind of become the defining tale of the Christmas holiday. And if you don't know all that, go watch the movie. It's kind of fun. Even his catchphrase, y'all know what it is, right? Thank you, say it with me. Bah humbug is often used to express our disgust with many of the modern Christ, uh, Christmas traditions. And so, so Scrooge is the man who despised Christmas and seemed to begrudge anyone who attempted to enjoy it. Now, you need to know if you studied the story that prior to Scrooge's life-changing transformation, uh, he, was, he was miserable, but, but he wasn't born miserable. He he wasn't born miserable, nor did his life begin in bitterness. It was actually the events of his childhood and his young adult life that caused him to develop the heartless, bitter miser that he became. So my question was, when I remembered this story, is what, what made him so bitter? What made him so upset. <clears throat> well, he started his down here journey when his father abandoned him. And then losing the love of his life, Bell, uh, drove him to become m- more reclusive and even more hostile. He became a workaholic and, and in, in an attempt to kind of mask his pain and his loneliness. And resentment began to well up inside of him when, whenever anyone around him seemed to be happy, he just, he just hated it. He, he just targeted them. And he would lash out in anger, never admitting what he really wanted was to be happy himself like everybody else seemed to be. Isn't that what we all really want anyway, is just to be happy Everybody to be happy? I just want everybody happy? His own feelings of hurt and rejection led him to hurt and reject other people because there's an old saying that hurting people hurt people. And although he had money, he he was a wealthy guy in the story, seemed to have all the physical things he needed, he was emotionally and spiritually bankrupt. And the tale of Scrooge, is, it's fictional. It's not, a tr- it's not a Bible story. It's not a true story. But the real life messages that are in this story are for us today. So, so having given you a little context, here's what I want us to learn. And here's what we can learn from the story of Ebenezer Scrooge. If you're taking notes, I got six things I want to leave with you. Here's the first one. When we focus on the past, we miss the precious present. I mean, isn't Christmas all about the present? The present being in the present live in the present we spend too (laughs) way too much time regretting something that happened or wondering what might happen 
And more than wondering what might happen, we worry about what might happen. And did you know that most of the things that you worry might happen never happen? Live in the moment. You only get it once, so don't miss the now, the present. Most, most of your automobiles out in this parking lot have a rear view mirror. And I've used this illustration a thousand times because it makes good sense. Pastor Steve loves it. He reminds me of it often. You have a rear view mirror allowing you to occasionally look back, right? Everybody say occasionally. I got a rear view mirror because I don't drive looking at that rear view mirror. Our lives come with a sort of rear view mirror. It's called our memories. And there are benefits of an occasional glance back of what happened, good or maybe not so good, to remind ourselves, to remember. But we cannot, we cannot move forward if we are constantly looking back at the past. Are there disappointments? Sure. Are there missed opportunities? Absolutely, but don't allow your memories to steal the potential of today. Several years ago, I had an opportunity to speak in a public setting, and I, I had a panic attack. It was a setting I'd never been in, and I'd never had a panic attack before. My wife was sitting next to me, and as I was about to speak, something came over me about 15 minutes. There, I'm, I know I'm about to go on, and I got something, and I mean something rose up in me, and it, it came all over me, messed me up, and, I, and, and, and I've spoken for 40 years, over 40 years on stages. That moment, just it was a, I, had, I just couldn't express it. My heart was beating. I couldn't even hear what was being said before I got up, because like boom, 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 boom in my ears. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They called, someone said it was a panic attack. I don't know what it was. I didn't like it. I got up and I spoke and I sat down and I'm not even sure what I said. I only had like seven minutes. And people came up after and said, thank you for that. But I have to tell you that for years, for years, I replayed that moment in my mind, thinking, what a, man, I, I blew it, you know, in my mind. And yet years had went by, and all, nobody ever said I blew it, but I was telling myself I blew it. Am I helping anybody here today? You, Scrooge kept recalling yesterday's heartaches and failures, and it was only making him more bitter and more angry. Because you can't live in the past. you got to let it go. And I finally got to the place that I'm not, I'm not identified by one event in my life. And even if I am, I just move on and begin to live beyond that. I'm never going to change if I stay back here. I'm only going to make it better if I move forward. <laughs> Isaiah said, forget the former things. Forget those things that, that you've already done. Don't dwell on the past. Can't you see I'm doing a, say it with me, I'm doing a new thing. Our worship team sang a song about it today. He's doing a new thing. Lord, let there be a new thing spring up in every one of us today. A new, hey, we've had a tough year. Things have happened. Let us, let us have a new Christmas. Do a new thing in me. A key to overcoming the pain associated with the past is to keep looking forward. Every, every time I think about that panic moment, it wants to take me back to, to right where I was sitting because you don't forget those spaces and, and you have that. And I'm like, got to keep looking forward. That, that happened, but it's already done. I can't change it. I can't fix it. I can't change it. I can only move into the future. Keep looking at the opportunities ahead of you. If not, you're going to miss an opportunity never knowing it was available to you because you, you kept focusing on the past and you're driving right by opportunities all all around you. So since that season, since that happened, I don't know, several years ago, I have now created some relationships and the people that I was wanting to impress maybe or say something to and I had this challenge, they, that's all, they they're not saying anything about it and I'm being more effective in their lives now than I ever thought I could be. Maybe it's, maybe it's been a fearful and disappointing and tough year for you, but there's more life ahead 
and more opportunities to come. I can choose to find happiness and joy if I look for it. You have to look for some things. But look for the joy. Maybe, maybe you need to turn off the news. And turn on some cartoons where they have automatic laughter. Maybe one of these dumb sitcoms where you know it's just slapstick comedy. And I don't normally like that. But every 30 seconds, there's people laughing in the background. <laughs> and I'm like, there ain't even nobody in the audience. I, Janet and I have sat in the recordings of some of these sitcoms. It's like three people. We went to Hollywood one time. Years ago, we sat in a live recording. I don't even remember what the show was. And, and all that laughter is going on. I'm looking around, and there ain't even nobody laughing. <laughs> but I did, play a, I, I did post a video of, of Lainey a few weeks ago, and this was a couple years back. I don't know if, you've, if you're connected with me on social media, you might have seen it. And it's Lainey going, and then she laughs, this cackle laugh that's only her. And, I, and it just kind of repeats itself. And I said, you can't watch this and not laugh. And sometimes, I have that on my phone, and sometimes I just go play it again because I just need to laugh. Okay, here's the second thing I want us to learn from the story. We can't always control what happens, but we can control our response to what happens. We can't always control what happens, but I can't control how I'm gonna respond to it. Scrooge could not control the abandonment that he suffered at the hand of his father. And that relates to so many people in this generation today. And I'm sorry, I'm deeply sorry about that. He, he couldn't control that. No more, no more than you can control life's circumstances and the actions of other people. You, you can't control that. But we can control how we're going to respond to situations and to every disappointment, to every failure, to every person who we think let us down. Scrooge reacted to Belle's choice to go on with her life without him by withdrawing from society and becoming bitter and hard-hearted. When life presents you with something that is not what you ordered, and let me be clear with you, listen, even Christian people, wherever you're hearing me from, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean your life is going to be bliss and, and completely fear-free and that there's never going to be a struggle. That ain't going to happen because life is life. And you can't control all the things going on around you. But when it presents you with something you did not order, you can either allow the situation to shape you or you can overcome the situation. You can't do away with it, but you can begin to choose to outgrow and outlive whatever it is you're facing in order to see victory in your life. I have to tell you from personal experience that there's some things that are meant to be, maybe, maybe they weren't intended for your life, either by your choice or the, the, the choices other people make. And the truth is, the things that affect our life most, more than anything else, or the choices other people make that affect us, but then now our choice comes in. You don't have to be at the, at the disposal of other people's situations, even their unintended decisions. You understand that most of the things that you and I take as offense was really unintended by the offender. They never knew it most of the time. Most of the people that you're offended at today, you're walking around, I've been there, you've been there, holding a, a grudge and an offense and a hurt, and they don't even know they've done it, and they're trying to figure out why you're acting the way you are. Here's what Romans 8 says. Through all the things that we've been through, we're more than conquerors. More than conquerors. How? Through Jesus. What things is he talking about? He's talking about our problems. He's talking about our struggles, our rough times. He's talking about 2020. There are many examples in history of people who refused to give in to the circumstances that they faced in life. I got to thinking about some of those people. Beethoven, now I'm not a classical music person, but I do know a little bit about his story. 
Beethoven lost his hearing at the age of 39. And most people don't know that, yet he went on after that time when he had no hearing, he went on to compose five more symphonies, including some of the triumph of, triumphs of his whole career. And he couldn't even hear it. He just had to read it because he knew the sound even though he couldn't hear it. And there's sometimes you know the sound even when you can't hear it. We want to hear the music, and sometimes you've got to read the notes. Franklin Roosevelt was a young athlete, very successful, had a lot of talent, but he was disabled by polio. He went on after he was disabled by polio and confined to a wheelchair. That didn't stop him. He served two terms as the governor of New York, and then is one of the only presidents to serve more than two consecutive terms. In fact, it was after FDR that, that Congress changed the rules. He was elected four consecutive times in a row as president, the 32nd president of the United States of America. Four times in a row. One of the, he's the only one in history that's been there four times, especially consecutively. Job in the Bible. I have to tell you, I don't jump up and down to read the book of Job because it's kind of like, most of it I read, I'm like, hey, man, I'm, I'm like, wow. But Job, he, he was not swayed by all the overwhelming circumstances that kept coming at him. And I got to tell you, I, I got to talk to him when we get to heaven. I'm like, man, Job, you didn't even have the Holy Spirit like we have today. You had God with you, yes, but the Holy Spirit was given after the cross, right? And Job kept saying, he did admit, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. He never ceased to go to God in his trials. Listen, <laughs> there are those who, of you who have faced tremendous challenges this year. Maybe the loss of a loved one. And I, some friends of ours and some people right in this town have lost loved ones recently and in recent days. And COVID is blamed for a lot of that. Bankruptcy may be in, have happened. Divorce may have happened. Job loss. Gosh almighty. And, and illnesses. We know about that. But, but, and my heart goes out to every one of you. We've had journeys in our life. No, we can't always control what happens, but I can control my response to what happens, and my true character is demonstrated when I stay the course regardless of the adversities that I'm facing and keep going back to God and say, blessed be the name of the Lord. I know in whom I believe, and I'm not moving from this rock that I'm standing on. Storms may come. Remember, Jesus said, it depends on how you build your house if you build it on the sand the storms are going to come and you'll get washed away but when you're built on the rock the truth the foundation God is God and life happens and I can't change all that but I'm not going to blaspheme God he's the anchor keeping me together <laughs> blessed be the name of the Lord because this life is only temporary heaven is eternity so there's a the second thing here's the third thing we can learn from the story of Ebenezer Scrooge when we exercise our right to choose, we experience the joy of change. Regardless of what those around him did, Ebenezer Scrooge did have a choice. Uh, he was not a victim of circumstances who had no control over what he became. But Scrooge allowed the negative, negative events that, that had happened in his life to manipulate him into becoming cold, hard-hearted, uncaring, and a miser. So let me say this very clearly. You're not a victim unless you choose to be one. Yeah, but you don't know what happened to me. I, I'm, not un, I, I'm not, please hear me. I'm not trying to be, is, is it unsympathetic? Is that right? All my English majors? I'm trying not to not have sympathy. That's the way a country boy would say it. Okay. 
I, I, I feel what you're saying. I'm not minimizing what's happened. But, but Scrooge was not transformed. He was not transformed until he chose to surrender his life to God in that graveyard. He had to make a choice. When your choices change, so will your future. When you make a different choice, you're not likely to end up with the same result as you would had you not changed. So, so life is like a recipe. And right now, for several months now, I'm, I've stayed off of flour and sugar. And so I'm trying to cook with almond flour. Eh. <laughs> and I love brownies, right? Like brownies, like gooey. Dark chocolate brownies and a glass of milk. And I ain't had none. Except I found Mrs. Jones' brownie recipe for keto, almond flour, xylitol, and since I ain't had nothing else in three or four months, it tastes pretty good. It's like a faded memory. <laughs> like, I'm not sure what it used to taste like, but this kind of resembles that. Except you got to hold it really careful because it just falls to pieces. Because it's almond flour. It's, it's not sticking to your gut. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. I like, I, I like to cook. And, and my wife and I have a great arrangement. I love the kitchen and, and all of that. And, and one reason I like to cook, some people say, well, why do you like to cook? I'm like, because I like to eat when I want to. So as soon as I'm finishing one meal, I'm thinking about the next one. I don't know what you're thinking about, but I'm kind of thinking, like, what am I going to do for lunch? And I'm, I'm just, the eggs are, it's 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm finishing eggs. I'm like, what's for lunch today? Y'all okay? Got to be happy, right? I mean, come on. Life, but life is like a recipe. Here's my point. Life is like a recipe, and the ingredients you put in determine the outcome. I tried to make some stuff with almond flour, and it called for baking soda and baking powder, and it made the cookies taste like cake. And I didn't want cake. I wanted chocolate chip cookies, and I hadn't figured that out yet with almond flour. But you're not going to end up with a prize-winning recipe, a prize-winning pie, if you choose to put salt into the batter instead of putting sugar. Your choices matter. And what you put into it is, is what's going to come out. Okay, here's the fourth one. Let me wrap up. I got a couple more. I'm going to be quick. Things to learn from the story of Ebenezer Scrooge. It takes courage to be happy. Yeah. Scrooge questioned his nephew's character. Remember, he, by reminding him, you're so poor, he treated him horribly. It was his own nephew, Fred, and he treated him horribly. He, he believed that Fred couldn't possibly be happy. There's no way he could be happy. He didn't have anything. He worked, you know, just like. But Fred understood it takes courage to be happy. Giving thanks for what you do have instead of dwelling on what you don't have. And what happens with the attitude of Scrooge is you can, you can look at what you don't have and miss all the things you do have. And when you only focus on what you don't have, every one of us in this room have things we don't have. But during the holidays, many people, listen, they regret that they can't see their families, especially in a season like this. I mentioned on Thanksgiving, we had this big family dinner, you know, at my parents' house. We we're all going to go down this year at mom and dad's. Well, dad's 83, mom's 81. His health is not that good. We had been diagnosed with COVID. Like, we ain't going. And my, my brothers, we had, there was some of them diagnosed with COVID. And we're like, and we're like we ain't having Thanksgiving. Cancel the turkeys. And we had it at home. But, 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 so some of you, you regret you can't be with families, right? <laughs> While there's, there's others of you, of, of you complaining that you have to. <laughs> this might be a good year to say, oh, hey, we ain't coming because COVID. <laughs> That's bad, isn't it? I did not say that. I did not say that. You know what that sound is, right? If you know what a cassette tape is, you know what that sound is. If you're like, what's a cassette tape? Don't worry about it. 
<laughs> Here's what happens, right? Is, am, I, am I doing okay? We, we're all right? Does it make sense? Here's what happens. We get caught up in the, in the if only mentality. If, if only I had that job. If, if only I had that spouse. If only I had that car. If only I had that house. Then I'd be happy. It's always like there's something out there. No, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be happy with that. You wouldn't be happy with that. Try it. You won't, you won't be happy. Oh, you have a moment of satisfaction. Man, it smells new and got this car and it's costing me $400.50 a month plus insurance. And then it's, it's, it's parked in the garage and man, it smells so good when I get in it. And about a year goes by and that one-year-old vomits in the back seat. Uh, then, uh, then you forget a diaper under the seat that you didn't know was there. Or orange juice gets spilled and it sat there for a couple days in July. And you open the car door and you're like, what is that? And now the new smell is gone and you got to get in and smell that other stuff. And you're still paying $450 a month and, you, and now you're not parking it in the garage you just leave the windows down hoping the rain will clean it <laughs> but you're still paying four hundred fifty dollars a month and you're not satisfied and you want another one and the commercial says now's your time the the, 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 the car dealership will send you a nice coupon we'll give you twenty nine thousand dollars for your four hundred dollar car i'm exaggerating if you'll just buy our new hundred thousand dollar luxury model you know, you can buy a house for the price of two cars these days. Drive a used car. That's what we do. Now, I'm not saying I'll never drive a new one, but we just drive a used one. Who cares? I'm not trying to impress anybody. If they don't like my car, I'm about to leave the stop sign a red light anyway. I may not even see them again. Who cares? <laughs> if I like it, I don't care whether somebody else likes it or not. Is that too plain? I thought you were trying to impress them. No, I ain't trying to impress people like that. I'm trying to lead people to Jesus, but I'm not trying to impress people like that. I, I'm glad I could have a little money in the bank. That's what I'm trying to do. Because <laughs> Dave Ramsey says, the moment you impress that guy next to you at the stoplight and you take off, that just costs you $1,000. <laughs> Here's my point, everybody. Too many people believe that to be happy requires something more. Something that I don't have, something out there, something beyond. The old saying, the grass is what? The grass is greener over there. Well, if the grass is greener over there, you've heard the response to that, right? Then their water bill is higher too because they're, water your own grass. Make the courage, courageous decision to be happy wherever you are and with what you have today. It's Christmas and we like to buy and we have seven biological grandchildren and many other people we love and kids that we love and people we want to share life with that we call family of choice. And we like to give gifts and we set a budget. But you know what? If you had to just sit down and bake something or write something, or, you can make Christmas happy without buying a bunch of stuff. Proverbs 17 says, a cheerful heart is good like medicine. A cheerful heart is good like medicine. A cheerful heart is good like a medicine. Choose to be happy. I'm going to give you my last two, and I won't expound on them. <laughs> Not much. For, for all those people that I told you there were six, I only leave you with four, you're going to go home like, I'm messed up now. I do myself a favor when I forgive other people. It's number five. I do myself a favor when I forgive other people. If, if you refuse to forgive, you're not hurting the other person, you're only hurting yourself. Okay? By holding on to feelings of resentment and anger, uh, you, Scrooge, he made himself worth. So you, you got you to gotta go on. So there, you got to forgive other people. Sometimes you just got to lay the hatchet down and move on. Okay, here's the last one. Here's the last one. The presence of problems does not mean the absence of God. The presence of problems does not mean the absence of God. Too many people say, where's God? Well, where's God? God abandoned me. No, 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 no. 
He didn't say you'd never have problems. He said he'd be with you through your problems. I asked the question, I wonder what people do without God when they face tough times. I lean on him. So, so the absence, the, 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 the presence of, the, of problems does not mean the absence of God. No more than the presence of clouds indicates the absence of the sun. On Thursday morning, I got on an airplane. It was raining and dark. Eight o'clock in the morning, it was raining and dark. But within a few minutes of steady climbing, and thrust. She beat me to my punchline. It was raining and dark Thursday morning. I couldn't, there was, there was no sun out. I didn't see any sun. It's raining, it's dark. Smooth sailing. Sun was out. Clouds were all down below me. That's what we call a a sky break moment. Just because it's cloudy and raining doesn't mean the sun's not shining. The airplane just had to rise above it. And sometimes you just got to make a choice. That this doesn't mean the absence of God. I just got to go where he is. And you know how, listen, here's a key. So where's he at? Job said, I don't know where he's at. I don't know where he's at, but he knows where I am. That's what Job said. He, he knows where I'm at. I, I'm, I'm not sure I can find him. He talked about his right hand. There's a whole message in that of power and strength. He said, I, I, don't, felt, I don't feel the strength of God right now. And sometimes I've been there. I, I, don't, I don't feel it. But, but in people in this nation, they, the, the troubles happen. They go, like, where is God? I'm like, God's always there. But here's the key, to, here's the key to, to making God in your moment where you are, where you change your, what you're tuned into to tuning into him, is you start worshiping God. And you create an atmosphere like music in the background, godly worship. And you start singing. I do that every morning when I get up. I say, Alexa, play Christian worship worship. Alexa, play this worship song. Alexa, Alexa. why? Because I'm conditioning my mind. There's stuff going on. There's stuff happening. It's raining and it's dark and it's been a dismal year and I've had stuff go wrong and things have happened and people have left me and people have died and I've had some mishap and I might have lost my job but life ain't over. Jesus said in the world you're going to have trouble but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Come on, somebody. You ought to stand to your feet. It's a good opportunity to say, thank you, Jesus, for being my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for being my Lord. Come on, right there where you're at, in your home, clap your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Everything's going to be all right. I may not know what tomorrow holds, but I know who is holding my tomorrow. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I have good news that's going to bring, stay, stay standing just for a moment in the room. I have good news that will bring great joy. The Savior, the Lord, the Messiah, Jesus is born today. And that means we have hope. So choose to be happy. Make this season happy. I said, make it. Don't just let anything happen. Make it happen. Make some decisions. Choose who you're going to forgive now, and that's everybody. I had a guy tell me this week. I was at some meetings, Janet and I, this week, and that's why we were on an airplane. And I, I had a young man come up to me. He said, I just, he kind of right here, he's a young pastor, and I've known him for a number of years, and Janet and I have the chance to, to befriend them and encourage them and kind of be a, like a spiritual father. And, and he said, Pastor Danny, I like you. <laughs> Pete, you got to say you love everybody. I love you. Maybe, so I, I just, I'm going to make a confession, right? It just comes to my, on, on text and tweets and, and social media, I'm going to start saying, I, when you hear me say, I love, I love you, I'm talking about everybody, but here on out, I, I like you. You know, people, oh, I just made a commitment, didn't I? But that young man said, I what? I like you. I'm like, yeah, you got to love everybody. Thank you for liking me. That means you made a choice. And there's some people that you like more than others. And there's some people you're glad you're not going to have to spend the holidays with them this year. COVID. 
Oh, well. I'm, I'm helping some people out here today. Your Christmas just got happier. All of us, woo, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> would, you, would you bow your heads with me just for a moment? And let me ask the most important question and, and pray and we'll be done. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? He died on a cross to save everyone, whomever will. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Declare that he is the Son of God. Believe he died on the cross for your sin. Confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord. And believe he rose from the grave. If you'll do that in your heart, Jesus, I love you. Forgive me. I passed. I believe you're the Savior of the world. You're my Savior today. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. You died for me. I believe you're, you're alive. And you're going to catch me away from this earth someday to go to heaven. If you believe that, if you've never prayed that, I want to introduce you to Jesus today and give you that chance. Heads are bowed just for a moment. Wherever you're watching from, there's a place you can let us know. If you're in the room, you say, Pastor, I want to make sure Jesus is Lord of my life and I want to go to heaven. Would you just raise your hand right where you're standing? Heads are bowed. Just raise your hand. I just want to make sure I'm ready to go to heaven. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. I just, thank you so much. God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Hands around the room. I just want to make sure I'm ready to go to heaven. Just, just lift that hand. It's a decision. You have a choice to make. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Just a moment more. Thank you for that. Thank you. Hands are still going up. God bless you. Right there where you're watching from, let us know. Let us know. Raise your hand. Tell us. Or right, you can put those hands down. Thank you. Can we, can we give an applause for everybody that raised their hand just now? Come on. Wherever you are, we're happy for you. We're about to pray a prayer of salvation. We celebrate. So here's what we're going to do. With joy in our hearts, let's say this. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Take away my past. Today's a new day in my life. I accept you as my Lord and as my leader. From this day forward, I surrender to you. Thank you for saving me. Amen.